Messi Dependencia, or the idea that FC Barcelona is dependent on Lionel Messi. Any team in the world would be worse without arguably the greatest player to ever lace up a pair of boots. But there is a notion that the Catalans are both physically and psychologically worse off without their talisman. With a loss to start the season, Coolies are already fed up with the squad without Lionel Messi. Today we're talking the origins of Messi Dependencia and how Barcelona fare without La Pulga. Hi, I'm Dan Hilton and this is the Barcelona Podcast YouTube Exclusive. Let me start by saying that the way Barcelona played against Athletic isn't just about Messi. Stylistically, I understand that many are frustrated with manager Ernesto Valverde, with or without the Argentine. The lack of Messi shouldn't distract from the fact that Barcelona don't look themselves in the way they move the ball, attack space, and suffocate an opponent. Messi doesn't change that. But when things aren't going right, Messi saves the day. We're going to start our look at Messi Dependencia in 2012, when Messi conquered the world, scoring a record 91 goals for Barcelona and Argentina. He won his fourth straight Ballon d'Or and vaulted himself into immortality. Barca, however, lost the league to Real Madrid and lost in the Champions League semifinals, winning the Copa del Rey as a consolation prize. Things started to become difficult for Barcelona in the 2012-13 season though. Messi rested three times in the fall before dealing with a hamstring injury in the spring that held him out of seven games. Barcelona struggled because of reliance on Messi. In the treble winning season under Pep Guardiola, Messi scored 24% of the team's goals. By 2013, it was more than 40%. That hamstring injury forced Messi to come off the bench to save Barcelona in the Champions League against Paris Saint-Germain. The injury persisted and they were crushed 7-0 on aggregate by Bayern Munich. With a less than fit Messi in the first leg and without him in the second leg, Messi Dependencia looked real. Barcelona went 9-1 without Messi in the 2012-13 season, but these wins came against Alaves, Cordoba, Mallorca, Real Zaragoza, Levante, Real Valladolid, Espanyol, and Malaga. A fortunate schedule without the Argentine, the team faltered in their one loss without him against Bayern Munich. The 2013-14 season was more of the same with injury. Under Tata Martino, Messi suffered a torn hamstring in November and was sidelined for the better part of two months. Barcelona faltered just twice without him, a 2-1 loss to Ajax in the Champions League and a 1-0 loss against Athletic Bilbao. Sound familiar? The team went 11-2 without him, but again the wins came against Malaga, Celtic, Real Valladolid, Granada, Cartagena, Villarreal, Hatafe, Elche, and Levante. While he scored 41 goals in all competitions, this was his lowest output in five seasons, and even when healthy, Messi and the squad were out of sorts. Barcelona finished runners-up in the league on the final match day to Atletico Madrid, the same team that kicked him out of the quarterfinals of the Champions League, and they lost to Real Madrid in the Copa del Rey final. Messi Dependencia was quieted in 2014-15 under Luis Enrique because of the rise of MSN. Coincidentally, Messi missed just three games, but none to injury as he was rested for three matches in the Copa del Rey. La Pulga's injury-free campaign coincided with the treble. Surprise, surprise. A knee injury in 2015-16 kept Messi out of action for about a month in the fall, but the squad survived without him, winning 9, losing 1, and drawing 2. With Neymar and Luis Suarez leading the line, the team was able to stay afloat in all competitions. Messi returned for El Clasico near the end of November, coming on as a substitute in a 4-1 win. A kidney stone issue was rectified by February with a minor surgery. Again, they met Atletico Madrid in the Champions League. And while Messi was able to play over both legs, Atletico held him largely ineffective over the two legs. La Liga was a different story as he scored 26 goals in 33 matches, adding 16 assists. In the 2016-17 season, Luis Enrique's final season at the club, Messi missed only six games, four to injury. A torn muscle forced him to miss wins against Sporting Gijón and Borussia Mönchengladbach, and a 4-3 loss to Celta de Vigo. He also missed a draw against Malaga with the flu and received rest in both legs of the Copa del Rey against Heracles. Another ineffective tie in the Champions League, this time against Juventus, led to an early exit in Europe on the back of a domestic double. Ernesto Valverde's first season in charge in 2017-18 again saw a healthy Messi. All five matches he missed were due to reasons outside of injury. Barcelona may have went 3-1-1 and without him, but the one loss was the 5-4 defeat to Levante that cost Barcelona their undefeated record in the league. The team captured the Liga with an almost historic campaign in the Copa del Rey, but again the Champions League trophy eluded them. Messi scored 45 of the team's 133 goals across all competitions, just about 34%. Last season was the one and only season when the lack of Messi coincided with lackluster results. Barcelona survived a forearm fracture to their captain in the fall, beating Inter, Real Madrid, 5-1 by the way, Cultural Leonesa, and Valle Vallecano, and drawing Inter. 
He wasn't needed in the second leg against Cultural Leonesa, but losses to Levante, Sevilla in the Copa del Rey, a draw against Huesca, and a loss to Celta showed the cracks of a Barcelona who so heavily rely on Messi. He scored 51 of the team's 134 goals, or 38%. That number was up to 41% in La Liga. Messi dependencia exists because of the burden on Messi to save Barcelona, a thing that even the numbers show you have happened more and more over the last few seasons. Messi has managed his health by running less and pressing less. As Barcelona's core has aged, Messi's free kick taking has improved, and many times he has masked issues in open play by results gained out of dead ball magic. With Usmane Dembele's latest injury, a calf injury to Luis Suarez, rumors of return for often injured Neymar, and depth up front now existing in the form of an even more off-injured Rafinha, the health of Messi to start this season is even more essential. Many of Messi's injuries occurred in the fall, meaning Barcelona had plenty of time to straighten things out, something they have consistently done in the league. Yet, the current injury crisis and lack of planning must have Antoine Griezmann looking around confused as to who he joined Barcelona to play alongside. The counter-argument, as shown by these statistics, is that the team has survived without him. At times, they have looked like they are playing more for each other, instead of just playing to get the ball to Messi. Could Barcelona be better without their talisman? No, obviously not. But it is possible that they both rely on him too much, and find him at the extremes of essential to winning trophies. Either way, let's hope Messi can stay healthy, and that Barcelona's new additions can help change Alverde's plotting system. A system that relies too heavily on a 32-year-old legend. For more videos like this, keep checking this channel and don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, Forza Barca!